All right, good, good to get back to work today. Guys came in good. It's nice to see a, a couple of the young guys got some recognition last night in the Pro Bowl, which is kind of cool. Guys were congratulating that. And then uh, as the team gets better, there's more guys on that roster that also can uh, get some credit. But that usually goes to, you know, how, how are you winning, how are you doing as a team. The recognition kind of goes that way. I've been fortunate enough to be on some teams where you had eight or nine, I think nine one year. So or a couple of years, and we just got to keep on going with that. The guys uh, appreciated and recognized those guys, and then we got on to business. We had a good day out there today. You know, our grounds crew is amazing out there that uh, takes care of our fields and stuff, and as good as any I've ever been around. And we had to fight through some of that, you know, at Denver. You know, the field wasn't really, you know, very nice in the middle of the field. And as you, I don't know if you saw the game, when you're, if you have a chance to go back and look at it, how many guys were losing their footing in the middle of the field. And it just made me think about what a good job our guys do out here because our guys had a good practice. And when you're on the ground, it's not good. Questions? As far as the Pro Bowls, Greg, has it been your experience that, like when you mentioned before, when you have a number of guys, does it lead to kind of motivation and validation going forward? I think, you know, uh, as, as anything, there's, there's personal goals, there's individual goals. But it, uh, one more thing like we talked about today was it highlights how important the team is. And you want more than the team. And, and, and it highlights, as we talk about, you know, the team success. And when the team has success, then you look for more reasons why. There must be more guys. And... Um, it's nice to see it get started, uh, but we got to continue to get better. And as far as Denzel, I know he's back at practice today. Had a good practice today, yeah. He was peppy, and he ought to be he's fresh, you know. So, But uh, it was good to see him back out there. And, you know, last week in the meetings it was good too, And but everything seems seems to be fine. Pro bowler for him, though, was a rookie. <laughs> what kind of accomplishment is that at that very, position? Very, very uh, it, – it's – that's a huge accomplishment for him. It'll be a great learning experience for him. Uh, but now he has to get onto the Bengals too. So he's got to focus to the Bengals and uh, worry about that later on. Uh, Greg, when you, uh, you, you told us many times that your message is win the meeting, win the day and all that. My question is how do you keep that message fresh? When, when, again, when I have to keep it fresh, I have the wrong people around me. And when guys at this level get the opportunity to get to this level, how special it is to be at this level, you have to understand that what I say is fine, but you have to do it yourself too. And our guys understand that. And the, um, there's somebody wanting to sit in your seat all the time. And you got to compete every single day, and every day is an interview, and they do a good job with that. Greg, was, uh, considering what happened in Cincinnati, was there any need to address Hugh coming back and to tone no, it down? No, no. And, and in all honesty, you know that's you know that's we're playing the Bengals, and you know he's uh, got a lot of good friendships here. He's good friends with me too, but we got to play the Bengals. Unless he's going to go out there and take a few snaps, a few reps, you know, then I've got to go back and do some really old scouting report stuff and pick up some college film. But other than that. You mentioned the other day that you talked to uh, Dorsey every day. Along those lines, uh, in, in putting together the roster that uh, you're in charge of now, uh, going all the way back to when you uh, met him, did you literally talk uh, to Dorsey about every single defensive player there was? I, I him? answered the questions he asked, and that's a good question. You know, and, and when, when you're around somebody else that belongs, okay, there's no need for unnecessary conversation. So, and he and I are, are pretty good about that. So when the, the, the things he asks me about, I'm bluntly honest. And the things that I ask him about, he's bluntly honest. It's not political at all, it's honesty. And so, uh, sure, we talked about certain things. This team has a chance for the best home record in more than a decade. Um, why do you think you guys have been better at home this year and how is it how important is it to establish? We emphasize it from the time it starts, you know, every off-season program, you know, April the 14th this year, and it's on our board. It's on our walls. You know, when they come into the rooms, it's something they look at every single day. Uh, but you got to do a good job at home. you got to do a good job in your division. you got to do a good job every week. But the big emphasis is defending your home stadium, playing in your home stadium and doing that. And uh, obviously when you're doing that, your home field advantage becomes strong. 
You know, I've been places where, and I think I've told you before that defensively, when you're playing at home, the coach to middle linebacker communication is working fine, but they can't hear me. There's no way. So we have to do all kinds of other ways to get it in there because the home crowd is rocking and rolling and enjoying the games too. So part of getting the excitement in the crowd and the excitement at home is, boom, you got to play well and you got to keep on doing that. So you expect Sunday with the run you guys are on? And then base- Hopefully it's good. You know, it's been, it's been really good, you know, since I've been here. And it's been one of the things is it's been impressive that we talk about with our team and we talk about the responsibility especially that we have defensively on getting those guys behind us because they're supposed to be quiet when Baker's out there, you know, but when the other team's out there, we're supposed to be rocking and rolling and that's how well you're playing on defense and how competitive you are in the game. So expect it to be good. As well as Joe Schobert has been playing this season, uh, did you feel like he was having a Pro Bowl kind of Yeah, it really did. But, you know, and again, it goes to show about when you miss four games, you know, that's hard. You know, other people – Maybe some of the people that, that don't get a chance to actually see you play, maybe all they look at is the statistics or the percentage of plays, plays, that kind of stuff. But it all goes into it. And uh, he's a uh, competitive young man, and he's had a very good year. And I think I said a little bit the other day about, you know, what an unbelievable game he had from a quarterback perspective on defense this past game on some of the checks and stuff that he was doing and getting everybody else to play well. And he played pretty well, too. Miles Garrett, are there conspicuous things that are in his game this year that were not there last year? Uh, 16 games, 15 games, 14 games, however many. I think I think we're on now 15. But uh, the fact that you're playing all the games and there takes a, you also have to learn how to do that. In all honesty, you know, and and how you um, understand the forest fire that you're playing in there as a lineman, offensive and defensive lineman in the core and stuff. Uh, but his just raw speed and power. You know, everybody sees that, and, you know, it's only going to get better. You know, the more experience he has on being able to make some instantaneous decisions. Uh, and then can we also help on getting – and we've done a better job of it this year – of uh, getting the quarterback to hold on to the ball a little bit longer. You know, one of the things that came out this last week, and I don't know how – if you all track it, but, you know, we, we track every week, you know, a part of our game plan on snap – the release of a quarterback, the ratio and, and the speed and all that stuff. And, and we drastically affected Case Keenum, you know, the difference, you know, what he's been averaging all year long and playing against us. And uh, the fact that we were able to have that kind of a pocket presence on how fast it was coming out, it was a pretty good deal. Garrett, uh, Sometimes uh, the manual offense numbers. numbers. If I can, but the, the follow is, uh, is, is Garrett providing you with the uh, full intensity uh, as well as can be? Miles is a good football player. Yeah, Miles is a good football player. Nick? Uh, Emmanuel Agba doesn't put up a lot of flashy mm-hmm. numbers. So what does he do that doesn't show up? One of the things he did this week, again, he got another one of those hard hats that we pass out on doing the dirty work, you know, and doing all the grunt work, doing the work that, uh, you know, knocks the ball to different places and occupying space and plays multiple positions. And, you know, the comfort level that we have, that I have, on being able to have him do so many different things. And uh, he's, he's, had a, he's had a really strong season, good season too, especially bouncing back from a couple of the injuries that he's had. Do you get a confidence boost playing against the back of the quarterback? You know, it, it, everybody at this level d- deserves a chance. And if you're at this level, and I, I have said this many times, and I don't know that everybody else believes it, but I don't think there's any backups at this level. If you're starting, you're starting. Okay, if you earn a spot to be on a team, you know, just having and being on a 53-man roster, the accomplishment that that is, and now it's time to play. So we we, we got to play. Is it a challenge, and if so, how much, to face a team within a month, especially a team that you beat pretty handily, to get either your guys ready or to just do it There's twice? Really, there really should be no challenge in that because, again, you have the wrong people when all of a sudden that becomes a challenge. No. Um, and then there's changes and, and different kinds of things that, you know, that we've seen them do to um, suit some of the people that they are playing now. That They've had some injuries. They've had some other guys come back from injuries uh, on both sides of the ball. So, but, no, 
and it, the, it's so competitive that this week there's there's it's a challenge it's a challenge to win every week no matter who you're playing it there's no there's no homecoming games okay the, the, we, we got to play we got to be we got to be on our mark okay no matter who we play how much how much emphasis or pride is there in trying to sweep a, a division opponent? You know, the division's a big part of it. That's another thing that's on that wall in there is that, you know, we want to make sure our presence is felt in the division. So it is important, yes. Greg, you talked in the past about Denzel and his tackling. How tough is it for a young player to kind of, or how do you balance the, in, the instincts of sticking your head in there with uh, maybe survival? You know, the big thing is, is that it's the repetitive, communication, the repetitive action in practice, and then the repetitive pra practice during a game, or not practice of a game, but repetitive action in the game, and then the consequences that you have to understand that, hey, make a better decision. And he has. You know, he, he has come a long ways from uh, playing at a high level in college and then being able to be thrown right into the wolves right now, you know, at this level. He really has had a strong season, and again, I I see a lot of strong seasons, but we got to do it right now. He's got to get ready for this weekend. It'd be somewhat similar too is that you know I, I mentioned this, you know when Mitch came back, you know after eight, nine, ten weeks, you know he's got to get back into it. And one of the things I needed to see in practice today was, you know, getting back into it, no gliding and stuff. And he was very sharp today, and that helps because at this level, there's no just uh, comfortable, easy, kind of gliding kind of game. You got to get ready to go. The vast majority of this team, uh, of course, there's turnover everywhere in the NFL, but probably more here than anywhere else. The vast majority of the team has players who are either in their first or second year on the Browns. Uh, is that kind of uh, is that an ongoing issue, or maybe just now? I like the fact it was one of the things, one of the reasons I came here was it was a good young team. And I think I mentioned that to you before when I bypassed some of the other opportunities and came here was there were a bunch of good young guys that uh, I was trying to get at the teams I was on, okay? And it was the Rams in particular. And so um, that can be a pro, can be a con. I see it being as a pro right here when you got the right young guys and you got a chance to grow together. Chance to see Driscoll in the second half of that first meeting with Cincinnati. Um, he seemed to be able to make some plays. How much does that help you with your preparation this week? And some of it, some of that preparation is really good because of the experience on hand, and then it becomes even more because you have a minimal amount of experience during that game. But then the games, you know, after that. So yes, our scouting report goes to those type of games on you know what we're watching him do. Antonio Ben for the offensive line this year. He was a first alternate. He's done very well, and he, you know he's extremely tough, very smart, and uh, he's had a solid season. He really has. And a lot of those guys that you know had the alternates, you know, you'll see a lot of those guys get a chance to go ahead and go. You know, and that's one of the things that have evolved in the league since I started so long ago. Nobody missed it, especially when you got a chance to go to Hawaii. You know, nobody missed it. But now there'll be. Lots of different things where guys back out, get hurt, get injured, still in the playoffs, all that kind of stuff. So those kind of guys, you know, they'll get some opportunity, which is good. Is he overrated or has he been pretty important with the changes at left tackle? Oh, he's done a very good job with, with all that. He, and he's been very, very settling, okay? Anytime you have a veteran, especially when there's change around there, and what is a veteran? Second year, you know, here, third year here. But uh, again, the, that experience helps. And it helps because on game day, there's not a coach standing beside you. you know? So a veteran player becomes that advisory person, uh, calming person, um, discussion person. So he's done a very good job with that. He's sharp.